Happy Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's Day. Look, I was reading this scripture, Psalm 40, verse 4, and it says, Blessed, happy, prosperous is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Or say it this way, blessed, happy, prosperous is the woman who makes the Lord her trust. That's for you today. That's for all of us. So let's pray and move all of our trust equity over onto the Lord. Father, we just thank you that we can do that. We put our trust in you. We need your help. We rely on you. You are our refuge and our protection. So we put all of our trust into you. In this volatile day, we put all of our trust into you and we know you're gonna help us. In Jesus' precious name, we believe we receive it. Happy Father's Day. For some, this is a day to be thankful and celebrate their dad. For many, there is a patchwork of emotion and memory, some good, some bad, maybe even very bad. These next few minutes are really for you, my friend. We're going to visit fatherhood with the ultimate source, God, who is the genuine father of all fatherhood. Don't forget, Whenever God creates, he has an enemy that resorts to counterfeiting. Yes, even when it comes to fatherhood. That's why Jesus called the devil the father of lies. For every real diamond and ruby, some fraud will do their best to counterfeit it. But that just proves that the real thing is worth faking. There is a real father's heart. That's what I want to talk to you about today. The father's heart. This is truly the Bible mystery that will transform and fulfill your life. It is the Father's heart. Oh, I know there's an extreme possibility that you've been hurt, offended by someone with that title Father, even the biological reference of Father. But God is an expert healer. He's a restorer. Notice, I didn't say He's the replacer, and that's so important. God's plan is to restore, redeem, and reform. Jesus said that knowing the truth will make you free, especially on this topic of the Father's heart. So get ready. I hope you get your expectations up. God's about to answer some destiny questions that you've carried probably all your life. In this world, perception is reality. Seeing is believing, or at least what you see, hear, look at, listen to, talk about, that becomes your reality, your truth, what you believe. Many people have not had good father-child experiences. For some, it's been disappointing or even just okay, while others have been deeply wounded, profoundly injured, even abused, even in their soul. But the one thing all of us have in common, good or bad, we've all got this spiritual daddy issue. And it needs God's truth to bring alignment, restoration, and redemption. If you didn't need that, God the Father would have never needed to send His only begotten Son, Jesus, to die on the cross, free us from the curse so that we could be His children. Think of it. If your daddy was enough, then you wouldn't have needed God the Father and Jesus the Son. You need help. We all need help. I need help. Oh, you thought Jesus came to earth just to save you from your sin. Well, surprise number one, Jesus Christ came to get you back to the Father, back to Father God with an identity as a child of God. Look in John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way. Where did you think that he was the way to? To the Father. We've got too many Christians believing that Jesus is the way, but don't have a clue where he's taking them. Jesus didn't come just to save you from your sin, but to rewrite your DNA. That's right. Your DNA is a written code that some hacker hacked, and now it needs a rewrite. Who better than the author of all life? Jesus. He came to undo the hacking of your identity. We tend to look at humanity through a lens of uniforms and positions, so our perception is thin. It's shallow. We evaluate people based on their title, job, their wealth, position, their social media page, their likes, their net worth, their, their poverty level. We've confused doing with being. That's the world's limited perception. It's not Father God's. With a compromised identity, we feel forced to substitute. So we choose to do so that we can be. Just imagine a football player, a nurse, a policeman, a rapper, a model, a priest, how about an astronaut? What do they all have in common? Well, they all have some kind of uniform telling us what they do, but not who they really are. 
God said in Psalm 139 verse 14 that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He also said in Ephesians 2.10 that you are his workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus unto good works which he has before ordained. DNA is communication, but all communication has to have an author. In our dysfunctional worldly way, we pursue the destiny of becoming the only way we know how, manually. We do, we work, we build. Outdo the other guy, win, pursue, we try to influence. It's part of our daddy issues. We know we need to be, but our carnal reflex is to do, hoping that we be. It's the whole, look at me, look at me. See, I'm someone, I'm important, I be, yes I be. Sure, sure, you be. I like what I sense and I hear in God's quiet response to that panicked grasp for significance. Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know, recognize, understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Did you hear that? Be still and know, recognize. When you know Father God, something amazing happens to you. You finally begin to know yourself. You begin to understand a little bit about your worth that He created you, that He loves you. Your beliefs suddenly line up with the truth, with a capital T, not a random fact or theory, but an unchanging eternal reality that is immune to death or corruption. Look, you're always believing, you are believing. The question is what? What are you believing? Whom are you believing? Here's a master key principle to life, to your life. What you look at and listen to determines what you believe. What you believe masters all your choices, and your choices are the sum of your life. So, let's lay a little foundation to answer why the Father's heart even matters to you and me, why it's so essential. In the Hebrew language, just two letters make up the English word for Father. The full interpretation we get in the Hebrew language is leader or beginning of the house, strength of the lineage, family strength of the house. When you insert a third Hebrew letter in the middle of that word for father, you get a new word which has the meaning, an open door to the father's heart, which is the English word for love, love. The father's heart is the open door to love. The father's heart is the only true source of your being. H.G. Wells said this, he said, until a man has found God, he begins at no beginning and he works to no end. Let's see what the author of all life has to say. Genesis 1 verses 26 to 28, God said, let us make man in our image. And that wasn't gender specific. He was talking about humanity, mankind. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over all the earth and over everything on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. Did you know there are approximately 200,000 different proteins making up the various structures in your body? As far as scientists know, every one of these proteins has a useful purpose. These proteins are produced from coded information in your DNA molecules. Boy, you're good. Think of it. They get their production and purpose from the communication in the strands of your DNA. The first thing God gave you was not your purpose, but your identity, your being. I've quoted it once, but I've got to say it again. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, but it all starts with your identity. Builders work from a foundation. God started with your foundation, who you are. Not what you can do, but who you are. And that's part of the daddy issue thing. Part of the human condition and why we so desperately need a savior. Only Jesus gets us back the legitimacy of our true being. That's why we all need to be born again, not thrown away, but made new by the DNA sacrifice of Christ on the cross. We've got a sin problem and we need help. 
And no wonder we have so many mental issues and depression issues and people in the news running from protest to protest while others chase conferences and theories and escapes. There's no substitute for true identity and you can't get there without the truth. When I say truth, I'm talking about capital T, absolute truth. And there is no other by which our identity can be saved but by Jesus. That's why you've got all these angry talk show hosts and pretend cultural representatives shaking their fists in the air, screaming. They've been hacked. They desperately need Jesus. When you're without the truth of God's word, you're without true identity. For beings that need to be, that's like living without oxygen. Truth gives birth to identity. That's God's truth. Identity determines your purpose. Purpose will trigger the provision. Provision manifests the glory of God. And the glory is the essence of God's truth. If your complicated God design is not powered by the Father's heart, you're forced to fake it, be a counterfeit. Then you try to work the wheel backwards to be. That produces angry, confused, upset people. They're always one more performance or accomplishment away from actually becoming evolving into the ideal of whom they desire to be, but it never ever lands. Perform to become? No, that's a fool's errand. Eve in the garden, remember our grandmother Eve in the garden? She heard the devil, the deceiver say, if you'll do this, you'll be this. You see, that was the big temptation from the very beginning of humanity. If you'll do this, then you'll be this. When Adam lost his identity, he instantly got a huge dose of fear. He became afraid. Only God's truth leads us and makes us who we can truly be, who we are, giving us being. The author of life gives us rebirth into being. John 10 verse 3 says, Jesus calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. You see, not by purpose. He doesn't call you by your purpose, but he calls you by your identity, your name. Modifying the outer circumstances with activity will never change your inner reality. Dressing better won't make you better. Eating more won't make you more full. Getting likes doesn't increase your real value. More net worth doesn't increase your real worth, but your biology or your past doesn't define you either. If Jesus the King saves you, you are royalty. It doesn't matter where you came from. If you're in the family of God, you're under his name. Even the angels and the devils know who you are and they walk softly around you, my friend, because you're a royal child of the living God. Your inner reality will always become your outer reality. So let me remind you again, the Father's heart is the only true source of your being. Jesus is the way. The way where? To the Father's heart inside the family, to being an heir of the living God. Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. This is beautiful. God sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the regulations of the law, to purchase the freedom of those who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. And because you really are his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba! Father, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. Now, that, every time we hear that word son, it means sons and daughters, the whole family of God. There's a lot of good news here. I mean, great news. But if you were paying attention, did you see that there are only two types of people on planet Earth? Slaves and the sons and daughters, the children the not free and the free, the illegitimate and the legitimate, the I got nothing no matter how hard I work and the heirs of God. Now, what separates the two? It's all based on God's son. And did you receive him? Did you receive Jesus? It doesn't matter who your earthly daddy is, how good or bad he was, or how good or bad you are, or if your daddy helped you or he hurt you. It's all dependent on the one way to be adopted and recognized as a child of God. Jesus. It's all dependent on knowing Jesus. He's the way where 
Oh, you know the answer by now. The Father's heart. We were all born with this common sin disease. We were hacked. Our identities were hacked. The interpretation of that, that means we were all born slaves of sin. No matter what our family background, a slave of sin means doomed to death. That's the destiny. No true identity means no true destiny. Romans 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No exceptions. I was speaking at a men's conference one time and talking about this very subject. Afterwards, a young man came up to me a little bit proud of his dysphoria. It was obvious. You know, you can build a whole identity around what makes you broken. Anyway, he said, I, w I was born this way. I don't think he expected my reply. And I, I smiled and I said, me too, me too. I was born broken too. That's why we all need Jesus. We all need the master. To many people, they equate being born a certain way as therefore God made me this way. Don't believe that lie. God doesn't make broken. God heals broken. God forgives broken. He forgives sin. I was born in sin, like Romans 3 says. But I've got good news for you, good news for me. Jesus, yes, Jesus came to save us from our sins, from our deception, from our iniquity. But that's not all. He came to buy us out of slavery and illegitimacy and make us children of the Most High God. Praise Him. The problem is we have too many sons and daughters of God living like slaves. Yes, it's true. They don't know the Father's heart because they don't take Jesus' way to the Father's heart. You cannot, you cannot exceed the programming of your heart. No matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try to discipline yourself, you can never get good results when your program has been hacked when you have a virus on your hard drive. You can't get to your true identity without access to the author, capital A. Remember, John 14, verse six, we already talked about it, but Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is always going to be taking us to the Father, to the Father's heart. So here's a question. Is it possible to be God's child and yet not know the Father's heart? Unfortunately, yes it is. Jesus told a story in Luke 15 of what is known as the prodigal son, the famous prodigal son story. Here's the basic story. A father had two sons. The youngest comes to him one day and asks for half of his inheritance so he can do whatever he wants with it. He doesn't want the father's oversight. The father gives it to him and the kid takes off for other countries where he lives recklessly and immoral. That's what the Bible says. After he spends everything he got, he falls on hard times. In fact, the country he's in even goes into a famine and he's starving. In desperation, he gets a job feeding hogs. A job he'd feeding hogs. He's feeding some pigs, right? And he's so hungry that he would have eaten the pig's food if he could have. He wasn't allowed to. But that gets him thinking. He thinks, you know what? My dad's employees eat way better than this and they live way better than this. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna humble myself. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna tell my dad that I'm not worthy to be called his son and, and can I please sign up and make out an application and get a job? Can I get a job working for you, dad? That's what I'm gonna say. Well, Jesus is telling the story and he says that when the father sees his son still off in the distance coming home, guess what? The father ran to meet the son and he hugged him and he kissed him and he put a robe on him and a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And he said, this kid who was a mess and this, this kid who was immediately just all like, can you imagine what a filthy mess he was? He immediately gets treated like a son. In fact, the dad even says, this is my son who was dead and is now alive again. He was lost and now he's found. Then they had this huge party, just like God does when you come home. So let me point out three significant places in this father's heart story. In verse 12 of that chapter, the son says, give me, give me, dad. See, he was trying to be someone by having stuff, by ex having experiences, independence, do it my way living, feel good living. And it didn't work. He spiraled out of control. He went from number one, give me, to number two, and it says in verse 17, when he came to himself, there he is living with the pigs 
and he realized, man, I'm jacked up. I'm living with pigs. I wish I could eat what they eat. Sometimes you've got to just come to yourself to realize you need help. And then number three, verse 19, the son finds his prayer and he says, God, make me. Father, I'm going to ask my dad to make me. You've got to be made. We all need a savior. We need the father's heart to make us. It's not so much a story of being restored to a position, but to the father's heart. The daddy didn't say, this is my chauffeur, this is my tractor guy, or this is my new manager. He said, this is my son. He was dead, but now he's alive. A true son-daughter comes to finally know who they are once in the father's heart. Once you're in the father's heart, you get to know who you are. If you're still trying to pay your dues or deserve God's blessing, access the father's heart. Stop doing what you're doing. Put your faith in what Jesus has done, what he's already accomplished. I love John 1 verse 12. To as many as received Jesus, to them, God gave the power, the right, the privilege to become the children of God. That is to those who believe in, trust in, and rely on his name, his identity. I had to learn that. Doing the right thing for the wrong reasons is still 100% wrong. If you don't fix the root, you'll always have bad fruit. You can't outrun bad programming. A document on your computer full of errors will only print out a document full of, full of errors, full of mistakes. Why do we suppose that shining up the external will make the internal whole healed? You cannot outrun a broken identity. The reality of who you are in sin without Christ. Jesus makes a way for you and me. Jesus pays our dues so that you and I can get to and be in the Father's heart, the only source of true identity. And the Father's heart is a place of rest. Here's my question for you today. Are you tired? Are you weary of trying to be, trying to become? You know, Gandhi one time said this, he said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Well then, why would you ever need Jesus? If you can serve your way into an identity, then somehow you figured out a way to bypass God, the source of all life. That's just crazy. Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus said this, he said, come to me. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened. What did he say? Did he say, I'll give you a job or I'll give you work? He said, I will give you rest. Yes, an identity, as I said before, will lead to a purpose. But no amount of self-sacrifice or labor or penance or good works or Christian works will substitute for the name transfer and free gift of adoption in and through Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus right now. Just say, Lord, I need you. The hope of this fatherless generation is the Father's heart. Jesus is the only way. Oh, let me say it again. Jesus is the only way to the Father's heart. I want to lead you in a very special prayer. I like to pray this based on Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 20. You may even want to get on your knees and receive all that God has for you in this prayer as his child. This is what I pray. I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant me, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ would dwell in my heart by faith, that I, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge, that I might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto you, Father, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. Now unto you, Father, be glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. 
At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.